So hello everyone, um, I'll start my presentation. So uh, I'm Sterling Kioskop, I'm uh, working for Schneider Electric. Um, Schneider Electric is a big uh, industrial company, so we have a different uh, line of business. Uh, this means that we are producing uh, lots of different products, so I won't talk about all of them. Uh, I'm working on the drives lab, so it means uh, we drive uh, motors to build uh, another, uh, other products like, uh, like uh, leverage or pumps control or stuff like that. And uh, back in the days, there was only uh, there were no need about communications, but uh, today uh, there is a lot of communication needs about uh, field buses like can open uh, Ethernet, Ethernet uh, IP, uh, backnet IP, uh, device net, and stuff like that. So we added to our products some uh, option board, so we call that uh, communication board to implement the field buses. And uh, going there to say that I'm a firmware architect on this communication board. Uh, I'm also working on uh, projects uh, that uh, we call uh, innovation project. So we are looking at different OSs, R2s. So I'm really interested in Zephyr, so that's why I'm here today. And uh, I will uh, introduce you with uh, a new feature in, uh, in uh, Zephyr, which is called uh, LLEXT. Uh, so today I will uh, introduce, uh, I will uh, tell you a little, a little story about uh, me and about my project. And, uh, it all started with, uh, with uh, an initial need, a need about uh, flexibility, because uh, as for today, uh, I think like maybe almost all uh, firmware, not all, but most of the firmware are mono monolithic. That means uh, we have to flash the whole firmware, and when you want to update it, you have to reflash everything. And uh, our, uh, our new needs was to be able to uh, to, uh, to amend a firmware without reflashing everything. So what's what we call flexibility. So uh, why do we want that? Because uh, as an industrial, the time to market is very uh, is very important. So doing that. Will, it will mean that we, you don't need to, um, to uh, do a verification about the whole firmware, the whole firmware to redo the whole validation, and uh, maybe, maybe not the certification. So that's what we want to try to do, like having the base firmware on one side, that's, we have that we use, we do the verification once only, and then have the, uh, have the application on the other side, and redo only the verification if there is a problem on it. And that's it. So, pretty much it. So, just to give you a quick review about the image, what we want to do is that we have the product in the middle. So here is a, 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 a soft starter, an ATS 490, uh, which used to have a monolithic firmware. So now we want to replace it with ZFRS. Today there is no, uh, it's not yet done, but it's kind of my dream. Uh, on top of that, we can see that there is a, a proprietary uh, an infrastructure and the motor control. And what we want to do is like to add uh, an application on top of it, maybe two applications. And by application, I mean uh, anything. It's not, it's not only uh, something that we can find about uh, Zephyr a sample test. It, can, you could, it could be like something uh, under uh, modules. So as a communication arch architect, I'm looking at uh, adding a new communication stack to, to, uh, to, um, to the product without refreshing it. So, what we what we have done, so as uh, all companies, we have done the, the state of the art. So we were looking at uh, what was already existing uh, on the market. So the main idea was first, as all uh, industrial, to do uh, to do it ourselves. So to do it uh, to do it uh, the proprietary proprietary way. So that is really great in the first place because uh, you can do it yourself. So if you can implement everything uh, as you want. But uh, the counterpart is uh, the, the back draw is like uh, as uh, any uh, proprietary code you have to, to, to when you want to modify it you have to, to reread it. If you hire some, someone new, he has to ramp up on it and he has to understand it uh, the proprietary way. Um, just a quick story about that. Uh, last week we had uh, an engineer we, who uh, retired, so it was uh, working in Schneider Electric for 25 years. And uh, when he started to write the first line of code for our product, it was uh, it was written uh, in uh, in assembly code. So today, 
<laughs> if someone new is hired, he has to read some assembly code. So it's not really great. So we would like to move on something more open source. So maybe something someone new that we hire will know the technology and the ramp up will be more significant, more significant less significant. Mm. So then we started to look at other technology and we found out that uh, ThreadX, maybe you know this Arthos, it was uh, first from uh, Microsoft. And uh, in uh, ThreadX, they are implementing what they call uh, modules. So modules is, it, is doing exactly the same as uh, LLEXT. It means we can add a new module to a product on top of uh, ThreadX. And this is working fine. Uh, we didn't pick this technology because uh, in other uh, LOB, we, uh, we had some uh, bad, uh, bad feedback. And a uh, few weeks later, we saw that uh, Microsoft was moving uh, ThreadX to uh, the Eclipse Foundation. So we said, OK, maybe they are dropping the project. Maybe we won't go there. Um, then we look at uh, uh, other technologies like, uh, well, I won't say the name, but it was, uh, it was based on the Java machine technology. So it meant that we, you could write any modules on top of the Java machine. So it was really nice because everything, everything was uh, sandboxed. In, sandboxed. And, uh, but for us, it was a, bad, a big drawback because it meant that we had to rewrite all of our, all our products, all our firmware from C and assembly language to Java language, and we didn't want to do that too much time consuming. So we looked at uh, Zephyr, and we found out that uh, it was a few months, uh, many months ago now, so last year, uh, this uh, new feature was uh, this new subsystem LLEXT was, uh, was uh, rising. So we, uh, we had a look uh, at it, and this was very uh, promising from uh, what we wanted. So what does LLEXT? What it does is very simple. It's uh, taking a, a L file. So I think everyone, everyone knows the, the L format. It's like a, an open source format. You can, uh, it's like uh, it's cut in different pieces. We have a header that says that we have different, different sections. And in, the, in this section, you have the text section for the code. And you have the data section for the data, or the BSS and Unit, etc. So what does the LLEXC first? It passes the whole, uh, the whole L. Uh, and uh, it's, it's looking for the different instructions about the, which are about uh, the relocation. So first, you have to look at the, you have to find the, um, the instructions. So it's different moves, uh, jumps, and third, 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 uh, third instruction, RM instruction. And uh, you look at this instruction, you decode them, and then you you um, you, relo you relo relocate them onto re onto RAM memory to be able to execute the code. So when we started there. There, there was only uh, one uh, backend, it was the serial lines. So someone who wanted to use the uh, LLEXT had to build an F file and uh, send it uh, to the, on the target via the serial lines to get it passed, to get it onto the RAM and then execute it. Uh, it was coming with a very simple example, which was doing uh, one print key to say hello world. But it was very nice because the hello world was uh, Implemented, implemented in the base firmware. So it, it proved that uh, an extension could call the, some code from the, the base firmware. Um, the only problem at that time is that uh, when we took the project, it was, a very, it was uh, at a POC state. So it was not very uh, stable. It was very maybe unstable <laughs> because if we tried to do the two print case, it crashed. It crashed. So we, that's, how we, that's how we started with LLXT. So what we have to do is uh, what we call, uh, what I call uh, enhancement. So what's kind of adding what was missing. So there is not, not so much missing. We, uh, we, uh, we added um, the um, ARM instruction that were missing. So I think it was only the thumb, thumb extension that move and jumps. Uh, we also added uh, a mechanism to export and find symbols. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, what it means is like when you have the two firmware, so the base firmware and the extension, they all have symbols, and they, uh, they need to communicate to each other. So the base firmware has to find symbols onto the, the, the extension. So that we, we implement some, some uh, function to say, OK, look for some, some uh, hard-coded symbols. So init, start, stop, exit. And the other way around, the extension has to know where are the, the, the other symbols from the, the, the base firmware. So if the extension wants to create a thread, for example, it has to know where the thread function is. So we had uh, this mechanism. 
uh, what was also nice for us that uh, it's not already, it's not uh, you cannot find it uh, yet uh, in Zephyr, but maybe soon. Uh, it was a way to build the, the extension elf because when you build the, the new elf your extension, you have to use the same uh, let's say the same uh, GCC uh, option and uh, the peak option to say okay I want to build the, the the extension with the, me the same mechanism. So we, uh, we edited the, the CMake files and the kconfig, etc., to make it work. And I think today, if you look at the code in Zephyr, it's not the same approach they, they use. I think Somat pushed a way to build the, the extension out of the tree. So there is like a small SDK to build extension. Maybe we'll have to talk with them to say, okay, maybe we can have the two mechanisms. Anyway, we try to propose uh, our way to build the, the extension from the, the tree. Uh, it's a bit like uh, in Linux. In, in Linux, when you start kconfig, you will see like uh, your like your driver, your modules. You can you can uh, you can uh, tip the tip the, the driver and it will be built in. And you can say it will be a module, so it will not be built in the kernel. It will be built just next to it, and then you can load it. It's the same mechanism we uh, we try to mimic it. And the last thing we we had to we were needed was to install some kernel callbacks because of the mechanism of uh, Zephyr. Zephyr, if you want to have, uh, if you want to be attached to uh, to an IRQ or if you want to be attached to a GPIO, you have to use a callback. So we implemented a way to for the extension to be able to install a callback inside the kernel, so we can get a notice if there is an IRQ or if there is a GPIO. I will show that a bit, a little, uh, a bit later on. How oh. uh, we also had some uh, modifications, so we add a new backend because we didn't want to have uh, the target plug to the to the host computer to send the, the L files through the serial lines all the time. We wanted to be able to put the L files onto the file system and then as the target to uh, automatically load it at the, at the start. And uh, to do that, we also had a, config, a configuration file. So it's a very simple. Uh, it was a very simple uh, syntax. I think we took uh, the uh, the ini syntax. Maybe you know it. Uh, it was it's uh, just a few lines. We will say have one's L file which is located on the file system at that path, and then the LLAC finds this file, reads it, and so okay, you have like many L files, and the loads automatically it them onto the memory and then run them. We also fixed a few issues, and so that's not, not very big deal, to um, to be able to do a many pin case, not only one, and then we uh, we also proved that we could call any uh, any function from the kernel. It was not only pin case, but we could be uh, any function that we export. So uh, create a thread, uh, create a mutex, uh, create a semaphore. When you create a mutex or semaphore, you have to take care about a uh, few things like uh, permissions, because in Zephyr you have to add permissions to do stuff like that. So we have to keep in keep, keep in mind that. So uh, to prove that uh, everything was working, I will uh, show you a proof of concept that we wanted to do. Uh, so on the picture, you can see a uh, counter plugin. So yeah, because when we started to, uh, to implement uh, our own mechanism, we didn't call them uh, extensions, we called them uh, plugins. So I didn't, uh, didn't uh, re-edit the, the picture. So when you read uh, plugins, it means uh, extension. So what we did is to create two extensions. One was a very simple extension with that we call counter. Uh, basically, it was uh, it's, it's counting the number of frames that uh, a master. For, I will do a, a, quick, a quick summary. We plug the, the the target was plugging was configured to be a, a slave uh, on the can open stack. We use our host computer to be uh, the master on the can open stack. And uh, the can open stack on the target itself is supposed to be uh, an extension. So we took the, the code in Zephyr. If you look at modules, which is an external modules, you can find the can open node, which is open source. And we, uh, instead of making built in inside the, the, the firmware, we, be, we built it as an extension. And we wrote a really simple uh, other extension, which was a counter. A counter which was uh, which is counting uh, every frame that uh, uh, which counting which is incrementing a counter each time a, a can frame is received, and we uh, we plug the let's see if a picture the, the small blue button just to prove that if we press the button we can have a callback on the GPIO and reset the counter. So with all of that you can prove that first we have a product which don't have the can open stack, 
so there is no communication possible with the, with the host on the can, can, uh, can bus. You then load the, the two extension, the, uh, so your, your product is now having the can open uh, stack on it. So it was uh, it's really a, a runtime uh, amend. And then you can, comp comp you can communicate with your, uh, with your host through the, through the canvas. In order to do that, we use the uh, STM32 uh, nuclear board. So it's an evaluation board based on uh, ARM Cortex M4. Uh, we, we installed two, two extensions of the file system. And we, with the configuration file to say, OK, we want to load them. And we also had to do uh, some work with uh, the MPU, because at first, the MPU was not supported. supported. Today, it is supported. But there is some conversation we have to, uh, with the community to be sure that uh, what we do with the MPU is uh, still in the community philosophy. We don't want to, well, we will do a proposal. Um, after that, we went a bit further that uh, we tried to experiment the, the zip. Because from uh, now, when you do the ELF, the ELF is loaded into the RAM. But we wanted to know if uh, it will be able to, uh, to flash it on the, on the ROM and be able to execute it on the ROM. Uh, we also look at the Zephyr user space. So here we had uh, some kind of issue with the MPU because there is not the, we don't have the same philosophy as the Zephyr uh, community on the, the MPU. So we have to, to open a conversation about that. And we did some uh, performance measurement to be sure that uh, even if a code is running uh, as an extension of if it's running as built-in, there is no impact on the performance as real-time or uh, stuff like that. I will show the demonstration afterwards. But here we have a quick view about what's happening at the very, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> Let's say we can see it. <laughs> it's just written uh, loading pl plugins. So we are here, Zephyr is starting, and it says I'm loading the plugin counter, and I'm loading the plugin uh, can open stack. And uh, it's running them. I will try to show you with uh, both my webcam, and I will do the demonstration at the end. You can read it. <laughs> well, it, says, it says loading plugins successfully loaded and uh, starting plugins. So you have you have the first steps. It's like first you take the extension, you load it, you say okay, okay it has been loaded fine, and then you uh, you start it, meaning you have uh, you found the symbol in it inside inside the plugin, and you can uh, you are able to uh, to call it. And we did that two times: so one for counter and one for the can open stack. Um, to do a performance, uh, performance analysis, we use the conventional tools. Uh, tools. So I think many of you uh, know the MATLAB Simulink. So uh, uh, Schneider is using uh, Simulink to, uh, to do some simulation. So we do uh, model-based design. So we basically built a very simple uh, model-based design. We, uh, we uh, injected some uh, input vector, and we recorded some uh, output vector uh, to build uh, a curves. Uh, we did the same on uh, the target. So we, uh, we took the code from Simulink as a C file, so you can auto generate it. And uh, you, put, you, you compile this code as an extension, and uh, you send it to the target. And then you, uh, you, um, you, uh, you inject the same input vector, and you record the, the same output vector, vectors, and then you compare. So here is the comparison. So what is great, great is that you only see two curves. But in fact, if you look at the legend, you have two times two curves because there's two blue, blue curves and two pink red curves. You can see them because they are completely overlapped. It means the simulations in uh, blue is giving the same result as the code running on, on top of Zephyr, meaning the, you can run the extension, you can run your code on the extension, and there is no impact on the real time at all because here you have the exact same outputs given the same uh, ve input vector. So it's really great. It means you can, the, you can use the extension in your product for do, to do your new know-how. Mm -hmm. And then we use the more uh, sophisticated tools where you need uh, to have some, some uh, license. Uh, Zephyr is already uh, supporting uh, Persepio. So if you look at uh, Zephyr uh, source tree, you look, at, you, you, you look for uh, Trace Alizer, which is uh, Persepio uh, tools and uh, analyzer tools. And then I won't go into too many details here because it's not the purpose of the presentation. Well, we have to check a lot of, uh, lot of stuff, like uh, core system. You can check the tasks, the system calls, user agents, CPU load, etc., etc., etc. And uh, that's what we've done for, uh, for, for some times. And uh, we get to reassure that uh, the extension is not uh, changing the, the real time, the task scheduling, etc., etc. So 
So what are the, the impacts of the products? There are some benefits and some uh, drawbacks. So the first benefit is what uh, we wanted. It means we, you can do some, uh, some partial update, update. You don't need to send the, the, your whole firmware so, uh, so, your, um, so the, your network or your way to, uh, to update the, the, the firmware. You can only send the, the extension. So you, have, uh, you, you spare some space and some, t some, some time on the networking. Maybe it can be, uh, it's not free to use the network to update your products. And uh, you get to get some uh, some impact on uh, about the, your your verification. It gives a lot of time because you can only verify the extension in your product, and so your time to market very very will be will be a lot smaller. Uh, the biggest issue that can uh, we can see with the, <laughs> the LLEXT, I think a lot of you already uh, thought about that, is the cyber cybersecurity. What happens if someone is able to put an extension on your product? It means maybe you can take control of your product because you are executing some code that you don't know. So here we are, uh, I'm not bringing any answer at all. <laughs> I'm bringing some questions to the Zephyr community. Uh, and I'll just say, uh, how do we do it uh, without with, uh, with, uh, being cyber, being, uh, cyber secure, secure, without exposing our, our new product to, uh, to, uh, to threats? And uh, is there a way, like, uh, like uh, for uh, example, when you use uh, your, your bootloader, the first stage bootloader, second stage loader, then you see uh, your secure application. Maybe we uh, we'll have, we we'll have to be able to, to build some uh, secure extension, something like that. Or is it enough to uh, to simply make sure that uh, the extension is coming from a source that you know, and uh, maybe with uh, I don't know with uh, with uh, with uh, cybersecurity uh, tools like. Uh, some private key, secure key, etc., etc. So it's a, you know, it's a question. Uh, we are bringing question here. Maybe we. All, I hope we have some questions, some uh, some answers. And the uh, other question is uh, about safety. Uh, if uh, we actually build some extension on your product, do you have to, first of all can you certify uh, as a safety level uh, a product which which is using extension? Is it possible or is it not possible at all? And uh, if it is possible now, if you uh, if you update your product with an extension, do you have to do the certification again or not? Because maybe you are, you are updating uh, some part of your product that is not uh, certified. Do you have to, to redo everything? And do you have to redo everything or not? Uh, so that's a question we'd like to have. So some answer we have to have. Okay. Uh, here is the last part of my story is uh, how, how, what happens when you are uh, in an industrial company and you want to, um, to share back uh, your, your code. Because uh, the point is, uh, so we use Zephyr, you, we took uh, the LXT technology feature, subsystem, and uh, I wanted to be able to share it back because we, we improved it and uh, we wanted to share it back and I wanted to, to see if it's possible as an industri industrial. Because uh, when you do that with open source, since you share it with the, with uh, with the world, it means you're also sharing with the, with the with your competitors. So uh, first, you have to be uh, sure that uh, you won't get uh, you, get, you won't get in, uh, any impact on your on your products on your sales, and you have to be sure that your whole company agrees of it. So first, what, what you have to do is uh, what I have to do. It was to to check that uh, we had a process internally. Uh, which is not the case at all. Uh, I don't know if uh, in a uh, different co company you have uh, <laughs> already some processes to, uh, to share some uh, code about, uh, about uh, open source, but uh, in, uh, in the Schneider it was not the case. But now, today, uh, a process uh, has been built and uh, it's not uh, fully op operational yet, but uh, we are, uh, we, uh, I'm really proud of that. Uh, like, uh, we, uh, we actually can share some code now. Uh, I wish share something uh, at the end with, uh, about that. Uh, what we had to do it was uh, looking that uh, we are not using any patterns, some uh, internal patterns first. So, uh, as a comp big company, like, like you have to, to make sure you, uh, you go to, to see your, uh, your, uh, your, your, uh, your IP department if you have one. Uh, it's not always the case, but uh, we do have some lawyers, so we have to, uh, to check with them first if uh, the code is not. Uh, Using some uh, other pattern, maybe or competitive patterns, and that we have the right to uh, to, to share it with, uh, with the community. 
And the last one, but not the least, uh, you have to get uh, an, app uh, an approval, which is a very complex uh, things to do <laughs> with a company. Uh, you have to get uh, all the, the quite uh, all the the, um, the people you need. Uh, okay, and uh, had to uh, also to uh, to check the process um, from internally with externally because uh, uh, the fair project has a process where we should give you the guidelines. If you go to the to the to the website, you will see some documents. We say you have to do this like this and like that. Uh, it's not really to uh, to make them both work together because uh, when you look at uh, the fear, uh, since it's a git uh, a git process. They are used to have uh, some uh, small commits to review, so it can go fast. But uh, as a company, you will never uh, propose uh, small uh, commits. You will have to do the, the whole stuff. So as, a, as a, in my work, I was giving, uh, giving the whole feature. And then when I wanted to push back to the community the whole feature, the first answer I got was, you're crazy. <laughs> That's too much code to review. Can you please cut it in a small pieces? Because we, we have to understand what you do, and uh, we have to be sure that it's secure, and you do, don't do anything crazy. So uh, that's what I had to do. And uh, pros and cons, uh, which is great with the fear community, that uh, we have a fast time rec uh, reaction. There are many people. I was really surprised with that. Uh, they, uh, I got answered like uh, like half a day. I got uh, answer and review about uh, my code, and it was really uh, ongoing. I was really impressed. And uh, because there is a lot of eyes, so here it's a pros and a cons. Because since there is a lot of eyes, they uh, review the code, they found some uh, issues with my code, so I which I have to fix. But also, the drawback is that since you have a lot of eyes, means you have to content everyone. You have to make sure that everyone is happy, because uh, if someone is not happy, they say you will say no, you have to do the review and start again. Well, that's life in Git, but uh, that's the way it is. So, but it's a, it's a great thing. So I just want to, to show you that uh, something I'm proud of is like a few days ago, I got my first, uh, my first uh, pull request accept on the Zephyr community. So it proves that it is possible as an industrial to, uh, to share back some code. So here, there is not everything. It's already uh, just a small piece of what I want to share about the feature. But uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, really, uh, it's already a success. And uh, it means it's possible to, to, to share back. Mm, that's it. And I would like to, if I have time, yeah, I have a lot of time. <laughs> uh, I wish I would uh, show the, demonstra the demonstration. So it'd be very, very quick. So what you can see on the picture, and uh, I will show you the, the rest of the demonstration. You have the ST board I was talking about. Uh, talking about. The, you can see the, the, green, the green board is a piece of our product. I didn't want to use the whole product, so I cut a piece of it to get uh, the connectors. You can see the CAN, CAN module, which is basically uh, using the, transforming the signals to get the CAN, the CAN of the campus, because uh, the board is not doing it. And then on the CAN option board, I plugged the, um, uh, an adaptator, which is doing some CAN to USB, and the USB is plugged back to the, to the, to the host computer, and then you have kind of communication on the, the bus, the, bus, the CAN bus from the host to the target. Um, let me try to show you. Okay, you have it for here, for, for, for here. This one is just next to me. So, okay. Uh, top right, top left hand side is uh, communication, uh, which would be the, the kind of communication from us to, uh, to the target. The bottom left, it's the console and uh, the target. And on the, the right hand side is uh, my Zephyr project, where I built Zephyr and the extension. I will just use it to show you that if I do a, just ls on slash f, well, you can't see it because maybe it's too small. But basically, I just just to show you that on the file system now there is no extension at all and there is no configuration file. So if I see if I start it, if I start my bomb, uh, reset. I need to open it first. Sorry. Cyber security. Up. Up. So here is a serial line. If I start it, 
Yeah, so here you can see that there is no, uh, there is no can. The can interface is ready because the can physically is there. There is no, there is no can stack, and there is, you can see that there is no configuration file. The plugin.txt is not found, so no, nothing is coming is, is happening. And if I try, Oop. okay. If I try to uh, to start the Python, which is implementing the master on the canvas, it won't work. We have some errors because there is no uh, there is no, no can on the target, so there is no communication possible. So now, on the right, I'm co comparing the the extension file, the extension file plus the configuration file on the target. So now, if I restart it. It will be fast, but as I showed you a few minutes ago, you can see that now the two plugins are uh, loaded and the, the, the can stack is started. So you can see starting plugin uh, can open load. And you can see that it's printing that there is, a, there is a, just to show you that there is a loop on the, the can which is waiting. And starting the, the pattern now. So you can see that you can see a counter which is increasing, which means there is some uh, some frames that, that, is, uh, that uh, has been uh, that are exchanged between the target and the host, and it's, it's, it's incremented. And if, if I press the GPIO, like I showed you a few minutes ago, the counter, which is now 47, 48, we go back to zero. So if it is zero one, it means the extension, which was a can open stack with a small client, was able to communicate with the host and uh, reset the, the, the counter according to, G, to the GPIO. So you can see that uh, there's a, how to explain, there is a communication for, with everything. So that's pretty much it. That's it. That's it for today. Thank you. So if you have uh, any questions. Thanks. Hey, how's it going? That was a great demo. Um, just curious if you guys were able to debug your uh, LLX as well. And if you could maybe just talk about that process. Uh, you, can, you can debug it uh, as uh, any application, except that uh, uh, when you are using GCC on GDB, you have to, to load the symbols of your, your extension because the address are completely uh, wrong. Because when you look at when you load the the, the, the elf, the, the, the address are wrong, and they are they are partially uh, updated with the, the LXT uh, when when they are loaded. So what, if you add the address to GCC with GDB, really, really simple. You can debug it as a, as any uh, any uh, application. It's not possible with uh, IAR. <laughs> Okay, thanks for your presentation and for the contributions. Uh, I have a question on how are you going to um, handle in the company the um, long merging process? Like uh, um, if it now it takes a long time to complete the merge, uh, how are you planning on um, supporting this uh, uh, internally? Like. Uh, is, are some products being developed now? Are you going to use your own version in internally and then update? <laughs> is, it, is this something that... Uh, That's a secret. <laughs> I, I cannot say today that we are using uh, Zephyr. So, uh, so no, we are not using Zephyr. But yes, I will do the, the maintenance of the, the code to, to make sure that uh, the community have uh, the whole feature, if possible. And, uh, Maybe sometimes we will use Zephyr, but uh, I cannot say that uh, today. It's not uh, something I can, can, I can say. Hmm. Have you done any uh, measurements on like the overhead of having to store this ELF file as opposed to just having it in your application to start with in terms of ROM space or RAM space? 
Yeah, we've done the lo lots of. Uh, I didn't put in put in there because it depends on the target. But yeah, we are uh, we have to we do some measurement about the room uh, the room. So on the file system, you have the, the space you have to use. Then this is the same on the, the flash. And also, with what we what was really important, it was uh, the time to actually load the application, which is uh, I think uh, the very uh, let's say the bad key here because it takes a lot of time to parse because you have to, to take the, the whole text section and you have to parse it entirely to put it uh, on the RAM because you have to find the instruction to, to be able to edit them. And this is taking for the, you know, the, the small uh, extension counter and uh, my, my board, it took uh, 10 milliseconds to, lo to load it. So it's a very long time, a very lot of time. And I think it was, uh, if I check here, that we don't, here you, you cannot see it, but here it took uh, to one, 160 milliseconds to load the can open node stack. And uh, on the Cortex M4, so it's a lot of time. I think it was your question, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Go so, uh, is it possible to modify the existing running kernel functionality, let's say single API, or else uh, it's only for the user space complete uh, applications starting from the main? Uh, not sure what you mean. You mean about the user space? Can you? Okay, so we have seen that the piece of code is a uh, print K. Uh, mm -hmm. Instead of that, uh, maybe a kernel scheduler function, whether we can be able to uh, modify that on the runtime uh, using this uh, piece of code or? Uh, the philosophy on Zephyr on user space uh, is not uh, doing like this. It's like uh, in user space, you have to uh, uh, here you can you can create you can call a, create a thread a thread so you can create a thread as as a user of the kernel thread. There is no limitation. It means the extension can create a kernel thread, so it could take a control of your board. And uh, if you have a, if you want to take to create some objects, you have to give the permission here, so the extension could get, could not cannot give itself the permission, so it's not working well now. But you okay. Also. Thank you. Space. One question here. I just had a question. Sorry. Just I wondering uh, about the security implications for this. Like, um, you know, does that open up the possibility for you know injecting some bad code, run yeah. time, you know? And yeah, yeah. How could, what could be done to you know protect the applications? Or? Uh, I think, uh, as I said, like if uh, it depends. Uh, first, you have to make sure uh, since you are using the file system. First, you make sure that no one can read your file system because if you can read the file system or write into it, you can do anything you want. And then you have to make sure that uh, your your code is coming from uh, from a secure source, so you can use like uh, like. Uh, uh, like a GP, G, uh, GP, GPGK, uh, like GPGK to say, okay, uh, it's, it's a package from uh, Schneider, and then you use your uh, private, uh, private key and uh, public key to say, okay, uh, it's cipher, so it's not uh, possible to, uh, to, to, int to, uh, bah, to, to, to modify it. But then after, I don't know if uh, when you load the, 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 the application, if you, add some, uh, if you have to add some security, there are maybe just uh, MD5 stone is, is enough, or maybe you have to cipher it as well. I don't know. So we have I would like to talk with the community about that for to, uh, to get their idea. Questions for Cedric? All right. Thank you. Thank you.